everyone, you guys are back here for another weekly video on my YouTube channel. My name is Brandy. I am with Brushed by Brandy, and this week we're going to be working on this piece behind me, which is a gorgeous piece of furniture. I can't believe the incredible detail that's on this one. So when I saw this set pop up on my Facebook Marketplace, I actually drove further than I'll usually drive for a piece of furniture, about an hour and a half each way to get this set. The price was right, but in incredible condition and just the details themselves, I wanted to get my hands on it. So I had to have these. So I'm glad I brought them home. And what I'm gonna be doing with this three piece set is I'm gonna unify them by using the same techniques on each one, but in different color combinations. So uh, once I put them together with the three different color combinations, I think it's gonna be a really fun way to play up each piece. Um, and then they could be used in the same room together to make a set, or they could go away and go to home separately as well. So um, this piece right here, originally I saw in my head, I saw it in black. But when I put black on it, it was a little too harsh. And that happens all the time that what I think in my head may not be correct once it actually comes out on the piece of furniture. So this one you're gonna see go through some of the steps in black, and then you'll notice at one point it corrects into blue. And that was just a change in colors, but the techniques are all the same. So hope you guys enjoy this video and my indecision this week, but it results in a beautiful uh, piece of furniture. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the set exactly as I saw them on my Facebook Marketplace. You can see why I had to have them. It's a three-piece set, the three-drawer chest, a vanity that also includes a mirror, and then the high boy chest. And they have such great detail on them. I fell in love. I did my prep on all three of these pieces at the same time. So I'm just going to show you on the vanity as an example. But I removed all of my hardware and placed them in a dish to go be cleaned. And then I'm going to go ahead and spray my piece down with Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner that's been mixed into a spray bottle with warm water. So I've just sprayed my piece with cleaner, and this is one way you can tell if your piece is going to be a bleeder. Do you see these drips coming off of my piece? This is just sprayed with cleaner, and look at the color that the cleaner is turning. It's turning all brown. You can see it right here. And then look how it's dripping onto my rag. That is bleeding. I know that I need to prime this piece with Dixie Belle Boss because it's telling me right now that it's going to seep through my paint with those dark amber colors. Once I clean my piece and rinsed it with water, I can go ahead and apply my Dixie Belle Boss. I'm applying Boss in Gray because I love the coverage of it and how it lays. Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer that's going to keep those amber colors from seeping through to my paint. I gave my piece two coats of Boss and then I'm going to go ahead and let it dry overnight and come back and I can start applying my paint. So this is where you're going to notice that I start off painting this piece in a black and white finish. And I wanted to go ahead and leave this part in the video because a black and white blend is a really tough blend to do. And so I wanted to show you guys how I went through it, what my steps were. The colors that I used on this portion for this piece were Dixie Belle Caviar and Buttercream. I know black and white is a tough blend, so it's not often that I try to tackle it, but this one actually came out really pretty, which made me cringe to cover it up. But in the end, I think it was the best choice for this piece. I love it in the blue all that much more. This is my first coat, and I started out just by outlining um, in caviar, and then I've got my highlight of buttercream in the center. My base coat, I just want to get my colors laid out on the piece. I don't need to perfect the blends or anything at this point. I'm just deciding on my basic color layout. Another option that makes the black and white blend a little bit easier would be to add a gray in between the two colors. Now I chose not to do that on this piece because I didn't want it to turn into a gray looking finish. I wanted it to really be contrast between the black and white, but that is an option if you want to consider this look would be to add a gray into this finish as well. Um, I would recommend something like hurricane gray would be beautiful in between the black and the white. So let's go ahead and just finish up getting these colors laid on and then we're going to come back with our second coat after this.
So my base coat of the black and the white is all laid on and now I'm coming back the next day and I'm gonna go ahead and start working this into a blended finish. I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini and Oval Medium and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna relay on the black and the white over where I had them before, only this time I'm gonna start over brushing them onto each other in the sections where they meet up and that's gonna create a little bit of a blend in between the black and the white. I don't use a lot of paint in this step. It's actually probably mostly water and a little bit of paint that's on my brush. Um, and I do that because I have most of my coverage in my base coat and I'm just really using this to um, refine the finish. I'm also going to use my Dixie Belle Besting brush and that's just going to move these colors into each other. So you'll notice I'm just going to work in small areas around the perimeter of this piece. Once I've got my black and my white colors laid on, I take my Besting brush, I swirl those colors into each other, and then I'm going to come back with my oval medium and I'm just going to soften out the swirl marks. The Besting brush creates a lot of texture in your blend and so I use that just to get the colors moved together and then I can smooth it out with the softness of the oval medium and that gives me that really soft effect. It is an option to leave your brush as just the Besting brush blend but that is a more textured kind of cloudy kind of moody looking blend so in this case I just went ahead and smoothed that out. So I'm working really slowly around the edges of this piece, just one area at a time until I like how it looks and then I'll move on. Um, I probably broke this down into, I don't know, six sections or so, got that perf perfected and then moved on to the next section. So I'm spending a lot of time on this one side, but I wanna make sure it gets I get it right. And like I said, this is a tough blend to do. With the body all painted, now I need to pay attention to these spectacular details. So what did I use to bring them out? My finger, of course. I'm using Dixie Belle Buttercream and I just placed a little bit in the lid of my paint container and then I'm just using my finger to run it over the top ridge of these moldings. It's actually surprisingly easy and you're probably gonna ask, hey, you repainted this piece after uh, this process, didn't you have to do this again? And the answer is yes. I ended up doing this a total of four times because this did end up needing two coats to get full coverage of the buttercream. The good news is this process actually goes really quickly even though it looks tedious and it's surprisingly therapeutic. So you can see how it makes those details pop and here we go with it done in the blue. Um, so this is my final color scheme and I love the look, especially with the white details. I had stripped this top down to bare wood and just gave it a coat of Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain in Walnut. And now I'm going to go ahead and clear it. I'm just using um, Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat and I'm applying it with the blue Gator Hide Sponge. I make sure and go in long, even, linear strokes across the top of the piece. I start in the middle so that I don't end up with heavy spots on one side or the other, and then I just pull it to either side of the piece. I make sure that I don't have any blobbing where my um, streaks overlap, because if you can see streaking when you're applying, it will dry streaky as well. I couldn't do all of the details with my finger, so for some I had to get out good old fashioned artist brush and I'm just painting around these spindles on the body using an artist brush. This also ended up taking two coats of the buttercream, so I did this twice as well. I love this camera angle right here because you could see how clean um, those details that I did with my finger are and they look really great. The number one concern I hear when painting with an artist brush like this is, oh, I don't have a steady hand. And so a couple tips when you're painting with an artist brush is you can rest your wrist or your pinky on your piece itself and then just glide the brush along. And then you don't even need to have a steady hand to be able to paint with an artist brush like this. I tipped my piece onto its back legs and I'm going to go ahead and add some of the buttercream detailing around these beautiful curved feet as well.
I chose to keep it pretty simple on the legs. I don't want to overpower them. I just want to bring out a little bit of the detail. Um, and since I use horizontal striping on the um, spindles, I'm going to go in the horizontal stripes on these as well. Another tip is anywhere you get your buttercream that you didn't want it, you can just come back with your darker color and it covers really easily in just one coat. So here it is with the details all done and ready for some finishing touches. I took my favorite mix of Dixie Belle Gilding Wax, which is a 50-50 mixture of gold and silver gilding wax. It makes this beautiful white gold color. And I'm going to use white gold as my metal, metal color. It's also going to match on the hardware. So I'm just outlining a few of the details. I don't want to go overboard on this. Um, just a little bit of sparkle on this middle drawer is all I'm doing. I also outlined this frame just using a little bit of black wax, which is one of my favorite things to do on nearly every piece I do. So now I need to make my hardware match my white gold details. So I'm just, I cleaned these in a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water, um, and then scrubbed them with a little bit of steel wool. They're nice and clean, but they're a little bit uneven in color. And so I'm just gonna brush them with my 50-50 mixture of um, silver and gold gilding wax for this white gold color. And it just evens them out and then it's going to tie in with the metal color on my piece. You can see what a difference it made in um, keeping these a nice even color. I'm just using a small old artist brush and I'm just brushing on the gilding wax into the details of these pieces. And then I came back and I sprayed these with a clear coat of lacquer. Um, this is just a satin lacquer from the hardware store and that's just going to seal these in. They will wear really well. This piece is done. I put my hardware back on. It's time to stage it and get some final pictures of it. I did end up spraying this in two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide clear coat. Um, and then I just staged it with a simple mirror, some books and flowers and some candlesticks. Wanted to keep it really classic. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button. You can find links for everything I used in this video in the description for the post. As always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.